Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be running through the tools that SameSpots has available to make sure that you maintain a high level of quality control within your lab. Hello everyone, so today I'm going to run through the tools that are built directly into SameSpots to ensure that you have a high level of quality control between your images within your lab and between your operators to maintain a high level, a uh, high standard level of your analysis. So when you bring, when you first bring your images into uh, SameSpots, and I've got a number of demo images here, um, you can see that there's SameSpots actually scans those images to find any common problems that could impact your analysis or could have an effect on the data that you can retrieve from the image. Now, when we bring these images in, on the left hand side we've got the option to include or exclude them. So if you brought your images into this window and you found some images that weren't quite reaching the quality control parameters, you can exclude them from your analysis. Now, the quality control parameters are optional, they're informative, but they will not stop you analysing an image. So you can still analyse images that don't meet the quality control criteria, but it will be flagged up to the operator that these images um, could perhaps be better, need to be recaptured, or there's something that could get in the way of your analysis and make your analysis not as rigorous as it could be. So we can include or exclude them at this first step. We've also got a couple of tools that allow us to orientate the images if they've imported and they need to be inverted, they need to be rotated or flipped or cropped. You've got all of those options from this screen here before you go down the, the workflow and start analysing them. Now, the quality control steps that SameSpots goes through, the tests that it runs, uh, are below here in the, in the bottom half of the screen. So as you can see, these images have all passed because these are demo images that I use frequently and are of good quality for those demos. So the first test that SameSpots runs on your image is to see if there's been any compression to the raw TIFF file um, that could impact the pixel values because that's where we're going to get our analysis from, our data from, the raw pixel values embedded in the TIFF image itself. Now this is really important because our software is agnostic. It will work with Basically, any gel documentation device that will export in a standard TIFF file can be used with same spots. So, in a lot of catering for so many different gel doc devices means that there is the potential that the gel doc device that you've used, when you export your image file from that software, it, there could be a setting to apply some sort of a compression, or if you've exported it for publication rather than for analysis, for example. So this check just makes sure that the image hasn't been compressed. What we're using is the raw TIFF file taken from your GelDoc device. Uh, the second check it does is to make sure that none of the spots in your images are saturated. What I mean by saturated is you've not gone beyond the limit of detection for the intensity of that spot. So, for example, if you had a spot with a pixel value of uh, 1000, but your limit of detection was 1000, every spot that goes above 1000 with the pixel intensity will show as 1000. Now, the problem is you could have one that is 1001. That would have the same value as a spot that had a pixel intensity value of 3000. So you'd see that you, you, you would lose all of the data above that limit of detection. So we don't want our images to be saturated, which this isn't. The image is grayscale. So Again, the vast majority, if not all, gel doc devices will export your TIFF as a grayscale image. And SameSpots needs to use a grayscale image to um, pull the spots out of the image because it works on the difference between the background and the spots. Um, your background being, once, it's, once the background's been removed and normalized, set to zero, and your spots will be varying intensities compared to that. Um, so this works best on a grayscale image. The intensity level data has a bit depth greater than 8. Now, the vast majority of modern gel documentation devices will use will export into a 16-bit TIFF image. Now, the importance of the bit depth of your image for analysis and, and for accurate measurement is the intensity level, that the eight, an 8-bit eight image can have a, a pixel value for each individual pixel of a range between 0, which would be white, uh, pure white and no data, or 255, which would be as black as it could possibly be. Now, for every 
level for every bit depth level above that you get exponentially more um, pixel values that that pixel could be so you've got a much greater range in which your data could lie um, we recommend and I believe every modern gel documentation device will export to 16-bit TIFF images so with a 16-bit image you can get around 65,000 different pixel intensity values per pixel so it gives you this much greater range of sensitivity to detect uh, small differences between different spots based on their pixel intensity value so we would always recommend a 16-bit TIFF if your gel documentation device allows if not always go for the highest bit depth image you can just to capture more data and have more sensitivity when it comes to do your analysis. 28% of the available dynamic range is in use and that relates to um, just the dynamic range of your image and your imaging device. 27% of the available intensity levels are in use and again this relates to not having a saturated image so of 100% of your dynamic range and 100% of your intensity levels, you're only using a small percentage. This doesn't really matter as long as it's not 100% because as soon as it reaches 100%, you know that you've, lost, you've got the potential for data loss within either your data lies outside of the dynamic range of your device or the intensity of some of your spots lies outside the detectable range of your device. And that's where you would lose data and, and you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know. Uh, same spots also checks to see if your image has been altered in an image editing program. So this may, this ensures that only the raw TIFF files have been used in your analysis. It means that if you try and use any image that's been doctored, same spots will detect that and, and warn the operator here at this step. And again, relating back to bit depth, the intensity level resolution is estimated to be 16 bit. Now, I know these images, I know these images are 16-bit, so I expected that to be green, I expected that to be a tick. So as you can see, for all of the quality control elements built into the same spots, these images all pass. And the histogram at the bottom just shows you how many pixels you have on the, on the left-hand axis, and the, the range of pixel values on the bottom axis. Um, so those are the uh, number of pixels on the left, and then the uh, intensity of the pixels on the bottom axis. So this is how same spots can allow your operators, uh, your lab to maintain a high level of quality control for the images that are going to be analyzed and the uh, assumptions and the experimental hypotheses that are gonna be proved as a result of your analysis. So that was a quick run through of how same spots can help to improve the quality level of the analysis coming out of your lab and reduce operator error by making sure that only the best quality images are being used for analysis. If you'd like to try a free demo of SaneSpots for 14 days to see how SaneSpots can help improve the quality within your lab, please check out the links in the video description below.